welcome to the 2021 Apex Comics Group panel brought to you live from the San Diego Convention Center. I'm Mariano Di Siesta, publisher of Apex Comics Group, and we have a fantastic show in store for you. And now a few words from an amazingly talented gentleman, David Lukacs of Liquid Avatar and Oasis Digital Studios. It was hot out there, David, and I, I just I just did a little wardrobe change from what I was wearing outside. Let's it let's looks dive, it looks really good. Thank looks you. Really good. Thank you. Let's let's dive right in because I'm very excited to to break the news to the world and to have fun with all of this. Phaser Universe and the creation of a brand new superhero character, Super Liquid Avatar. And it's all debuting in a special comic book that we're producing now. Tell me a little bit about Super Liquid Avatar, the, the origins, the, the concept. I know we worked on this together, but let's, let's talk a little bit about it. Well, you're much better at this than I am because, you know, I'm a neophyte in the creation of comic book characters. I've been a comic book fan my whole life, and this is, this is, this is quite amazing. But uh, Super Liquid Avatar starts out as a scientist, a very, very well-heeled scientist, Marcus Janus Alamore. And uh, he, I believe the premise is that he, there is a terrible, terrible accident, and his consciousness is is separated from his physical body and it takes the form into this um, malleable me metallic form that becomes super liquid avatar did i get it right I, I think you nailed it i think that encapsulates everything we've talked about wow i got it right the first try that's pretty good and, and the challenge as you know was to create a a fun and cool looking character that would embody the premise of the the parent company it's based from, which is Liquid Avatar, uh, and and Liquid Avatars actually, you are much better at explaining all of this. Um, tell me a little bit about Liquid Avatar. So uh, thanks. Um, you know, it's it's funny. You're way better at comic books, so I'll just leave it at that. And the creative <laughs> process and drawing and a whole bunch of other stuff, which I'll never be good at at all. But uh, Liquid Avatar really um, empowers people to manage control and benefit from their digital identity. Now, how does, how does that really relate to a comic book? Well, we believe that, you know, digitally we are the sum of our parts. And what does everybody like to do online? They, 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 they like to um, fantasize of who they could be. They like to be um, what they would love to be in the real world. So we're giving everyone the opportunity to take different facets of their personalities and create avatars for those. It could be a work avatar, it could be a school avatar, it could be a family avatar, it could be a sports avatar. They can, people can create different facets of their personality and assign them to different images, different high quality icons. And eventually we're hoping, um, you know, 3D animated icons. You've nailed it. You've nailed it right on the head because the premise here is what you just described as the nature of Liquid Avatar, of what folks can do with a Liquid Avatar. And that is actually encapsulated in what this hero does. He changes shape. He, he can change his body and morph into other identities, which is, in my mind, ideal. Well, you know, and... and, and you know, we, Mariano, as you know, we take it one step further, then you can assign with liquid avatar avatars, as the case may be, I know that's sort of a, a double wordplay, but what you can do is you can then assign various pieces of your digital identity to our liquid avatar icons. So, so you're right. What we've tried to do, I think, as a group is be able to take something as new and innovative and make it as, as gamified and as exciting as possible and still stay true to our roots, both in the business and the technology world, as well in the gamification world. And in case there's any question whatsoever, this comic book that we're working on is pure science fiction adventure. 
We've got phaser time traveling. We're back in the age of the dinosaurs. He's battling villains. They end up in, in the present in the project phaser military base, huge action adventure. Mm -hmm. The creation of, of the super liquid avatar character is going to be a, a fun, fun ride for everybody. And I've brought Matt Gaudio on board, put his heart and soul into it. Super talented artist. I think we're, we're seeing some of the artwork now as, as we talk. As far as Phaser goes, um, you know, it was a character before I started work on this uh, that I was unfamiliar with. And so I got a chance to do, do my homework, do a little bit of research. And um, that was cool. It was, it was fun to explore the character and what makes him unique. Um, I think he has a really strong hook. Um, you know, the idea that he, he's being transported through time and space, um, and wherever he winds up, he's got either a new or a different set of powers. Um, I thought it was a really cool concept. Um, and I think, you know, as a writer, uh, I, I would love something like that. It, it just makes things exciting. It, it opens up a whole, um, world of possibilities every time you, you start writing a new issue, um. So I, I found that that was one of the first things that I, I noticed um, that grabbed my attention that I thought was really strong. Um, design wise, um, a classic golden age type costume um, that was updated for us by the great Ron Friends. Um, and really I think stuck to the core of that initial design, um, but also helped modernize it a little bit. Um, and then we've got a, a really colorful cast of supporting characters throughout the rest of this book. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes and uh, with a variety of different powers. So um, going through and just learning about each of them and, and trying to figure out how to use them um, was another, another fun challenge for me throughout the duration of this project. On top of everything else, David, we're throwing some bells and whistles into this comic that are not really normally done by most companies. So the covers are going to be extra special. Not only do we have variant artwork by, by right. various top artists, but there are also other special things going on on the cover. Can you clue us in a little on what we're going to be doing with the covers? Well, Mariano, I think, um, I think for those that are that are going to be collecting this book, it's going to be an outstanding opportunity to um, not only get the book, but I think we'll have some special editions available um, for people to have signed and we're hoping CGC then beyond that. But we're also going to be doing some really cool augmented reality with this. So you're going to be able to take the comic book cover, literally take a, a picture with it with your liquid avatar augmented reality lens and you're going to see things come up and, and, and opportunities to explore additional storylines, certain benefits and features, uh, quite a few Easter eggs. There'll be a lot going on for the user that they wouldn't normally get in any other comic book. So really, this is going to be taking your smartphone or your tablet, waving it over the cover, and then all sorts of amazing special effects are then going to be visible through the liquid avatar app is that about right that's a that's a very fair way to say it i mean it's it, we're we're excited about this because it gives it gives an extra dimension to a project that that isn't available in print and, and i've brought plenty of top-notch professionals on board to create variant covers for us um, fred hayes and johnny green two very very talented artists and they've brought their talent to bear on all of this. Some preliminary artwork is, is available now. That's going to be a, one of the covers that has this augmented reality material built into it. Um, another set of tremendously talented artists, Ron Friends and Brett Breeding. Tell me, have you been getting emails from some guy named Mariano Nicieza? Gotten several emails from Mariano Nicieza. Yes, I have. Why do you ask? Who the heck is this guy? He is the, uh, the, the superstar that we are currently doing a cover for, for Phaser. 
You're telling me this isn't some chucklehead out there, or, you know, comic book uh, creator wannabe who's just no. using the name of some popular, you know, co-creator of Deadpool to get in the back door to the industry or something? I hate to tell you, I know you get those all the time, but no, he's legit. Yeah. He's not some crazed fan that just loved your work on the death of Superman. This is a guy who is creating new concepts all the time even at marvel when when we were both at marvel he was he held positions as special projects editor and senior art director uh he's got a ba at rutgers man he's got he's got an mfa he can tell me more about what i do for a living than i can <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know i i did a google search on this guy and i gotta tell you after seeing his picture i get the feeling he wants to sell me a used car now, come on, if we could control how we looked, would we look like this on a video? That's that, true. That, that, that That's thousands, true. possibly hundreds of thousands of people might see. I haven't had my hair done for this. You caught me in the middle of working on a Thor uh, commission. So, you know, this is my natural look at my studio. But, you know, I would have done my hair. Thanks for letting me know. I will go uh, mark him as okay. And uh, I guess I should prepare an invoice. It was good talking to you, Brett. And it was good to see you, Ron. Here, here's some of the artwork. Let's at least let's have some fun showing off their art because for really sure. their talent speaks for itself. And last but not least is again a very old friend of mine has uh, worked with me back in the Marvel days and has really made a tremendous name for himself, an extremely talented artist. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just super proud to be working with him. Uh, Derek Robertson. Derek Robertson has lent his talents to a, uh, a variant cover for this project. And I couldn't be more excited. It's, it's, it's amazing to see the artwork, Mariano. I mean, everyone's bringing their, you know, their most amazing talent to bear. And, we're super excited at Liquid Avatar and, and very proud to be associated with this project. And, and, and uh, we can't wait for, for the public to be able to con consume this product and, and see what we're so excited about. Please introduce yourselves. I'm Gary Schaefer, the co-owner of The Outer Spaceman. I've got the distinguished pleasure of partnering with Mel Burncrant, the creator of The Outer Spaceman, 51, 52 years ago. Since 1998, Mel and I have partnered our interests together to bring the Outer Spaceman back to generations of clamoring fans who desired the greatest space toys from the 1960s to come back into the light of day from the darkness that they were in for so long. And today it's more relevant than ever, given that there's an almost brand new space race going on. It's no longer who's going to get to space first or who's going to get to the moon first. Now it's who's going to get to Mars first. Now it's who's going to get even deeper into space and deeper into time as we travel. And now more than ever in such a period of Earth's history with no heroes, the outer spacemen are destined for success in this newfound space race that we are all in. I'm Wilson Ramos. I'm the art director of Outer Spacemen, uh, a part of Apex Comics. And basically, I'm here to put files together. And um, I'm excited because there's so many uh, there's so many characters that are unique. I'm Frank Lovetcha. I'm the editor in chief of Apex Comics, who is working on the Outer Spacemen in the capacity of, of writing and editing the, the trading cards. And I have to tell you, I, I'm a newbie. I was not familiar with the Outer Spacemen, but the more I, I researched them and the more I read and wrote about them, just the more fascinating they became, this entire self-contained universe that Mel created. And then I started reading about Mel's life, and this guy is one of the most creative, artistic people I have ever read or written about. So to be part of this is enormous fun, but it's also like being a part of something that is an important part of pop culture history. And I'm really happy to help do whatever I can to get the outer spacemen out there. Fun things that David has brought to the table is uh, Liquid Avatars and Oasis Digital Studios. 
And through these companies, we are doing amazing things with the outer spacemen that have never been done before. Some of the, the greatest art is being produced right now for these characters. Uh, David, is there anything you want to add to all of this? Well, thanks, Mariano. It's great to have everyone on board. And Liquid Avatar and Oasis Digital Studios is proud to be part of this. Um, I remember back in the 60s, you know, the, the emergence of the space race and the outer spacemen. And um, we were talking about it the other day when Walter Cronkite would take off his glasses and, and, and in signing off. And I think he would say, and that's the way it was. But uh, I also remember, you know, sort of CBS animation when man was going to the moon and the Apollo you know, the, the Apollo animation. So this just brings us back, but we've been able to take that creativity and that retro feel from the 1960s and, and add, you know, 3D um, uh, CG and, and new technologies to bring all of this back to life and, and, and really bring it in a form for liquid avatars that people can collect and augmented reality programs and, and digital collectibles and all kinds of great, great programs to, to, to really make it special for collectors and those that are interested in becoming collectors. You know, you know one of the things about the Outer Spacemen is that they're so iconic looking, they're so archetypal in their origins. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't help but look at the Outer Spacemen, any one of them individually, and something is reminiscent about it. You've seen it before you remembered it from somewhere, whether it was from a television show or a movie or a comic book cover. There's something really iconic and memory inducing in regards to the outer spaceman. And Mel was successful enough to create the original seven in such a way that, you know, these are the best that their planets have to offer. The best of the best. If I can add to that and Mariano, if, if, if you don't mind, the, one of the big things we're really excited about as well is the comic book we're coming out. And Mariano, maybe you and the team could talk about it with Apex because that's a big opportunity um, to, to invigorate the brand and, and really bring it to generations of, of comic book fans, people who remember the 60s, the 70s, the 80s and beyond. So this is gonna be a huge opportunity to work with Apex and, and Liquid Avatar Oasis and the Outer Spacemen to create something very special. So yep. yes, we're to, to echo what Gary was talking about as well, David, uh, we are expanding the, the outer spacemen. It, it has primarily been a toy line. And as Gary stated, seven original characters, but now Mel is up to 21 characters that he's, he's created. So how do we explore those 21 characters? What, what are some vehicles to get that done? Obviously comic books, as you just talked about, trading cards, but the comic book will be a very exciting project. It will springboard from the Bible that Gary was talking about, the, the character Bible, will springboard some new story ideas. And the comic book, like the other projects we are talking about, will have augmented reality components and will connect to liquid avatars and, and be able to display some amazing stuff when you wave a tablet or a phone over the comic book covers. So there's some really exciting work that, that's happening right now, live as, as, we're, as we're taping. Um, the comic book is one. The trading card set is even more exciting what's going on with that. That has all the things we just talked about. Plus, it's a, it's a digital trading card set, which allows for all sorts of special effects that you normally wouldn't see in print. So, And again, that's Frank and Wilson stepping on board to help with all of that. So some very, very exciting things going on. So, and if I might just add to that, Mariano, you know, the whole campaign that we're starting is all about the outer spacemen have landed. That's yeah. sort of the thematic um, uh, premise of, of the campaign. So we're also looking and hoping by, by late this year, we'll also be doing a global scavenger hunt. We're using Liquid Avatar where people can go into their uh, community and basically capture some of the outer spacemen and, and do some amazing things through augmented reality. And we hope to have some great prizes to give away at that time as well. Absolutely. Gary, some closing yeah. words for us. Impart you know, us with some cosmic knowledge. If there's ever been a time for heroes, if there's ever been a time for something spectacular and something retro yet futuristic, it's the outer spaceman. 
because what matters is you're going to find ultimate happiness when you see what's cap what's happening with the outer spaceman with all of the new mandates all of the new initiatives all of the new products all the new directions that we're going it is a matter of time now until this really does become something extraordinary and i'll tell you what there's a billion new star wars fans every 10 years well you know what there's going to be a billion osm fans before you know it let's get right into it with a, a fabulous fabulous project that i'm i'm super happy to announce the right project. And, and we've got the right guys for the right project. Gentlemen. I am the legendary Tom DeFalco. <laughs> that was a, a title bestowed on me by Rampaging Ron over here. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Tell them the real story, Tom. Tell them the real story. Come on. And, and no, we'll, we'll save that. We'll save that for another video. All right. Okay. Any, anyway, I was briefly the editor-in-chief of Marvel for about seven years. And um, I'm associated with, <laughs> with characters such as uh, Spider-Man, uh, Th Thunderstrike, Thor, the Fantastic Four, and of course, uh, Spider-Girl. And I'm very proud to be working with my unindicted co-conspirator, Ron Friends. Uh, we haven't been indicted yet. Um, uh, <laughs> well, we haven't been. No, not yet. Not, <laughs> not, yet. not yet. Next week. Anyway, <laughs> young. Uh, well, we're working on a brand new project called uh, uh, the, the the Right Program. You know, Tom no. DeFalco and Ron Francis. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I I think no, the it, title is. The right project. It's, yeah, it's the right project. We're working yeah. on a pro project. Yeah. It's it's also called the right project. And, that's and where, the, that's where we are. Okay. And for the first time ever, it's actually going to be called Tom DeFalco and Ron Frenzes, the right project. Even though Tom, so. even, even though Tom doesn't know what yeah, Tom doesn't know what the heck he's talking about most of the time. <laughs> I'm not getting in the middle of this, guys. I'm just going to watch it. I'm just going to watch No, we're rewriting it. I'm writing and rewriting and going back and forth. You know, what, what do I know anymore? No, this, it's always smart to just... Most editors we've had in this industry have kind of just sat back and watched us implode. That's yes. kind of our charm when we're working on a title. You know? <laughs> but yeah, my, my name is Ron Friends. I'm a penciler uh, and a... Uh, Thankfully, through the efforts of Tom as, as a very giving writer, we've co-plotted a lot of things together. We've told a lot of uh, very fun stories, created some terrific characters that have had some staying power with fans. We've had a very loyal fan base for, for many, many years. Uh, it's very humbling. And uh, now we hope to exploit them <laughs> by uh, creating a title. Uh, this is one of the first times, as we've created for other companies, but this is one of the first times we've created uh, for ourselves with our name in the titles. It's a fun book. It's a terrific book combining modern technology to the extent that Tom and I understand it mm -hmm. and, uh, and the magic of a young man's imagination, which we understand intimately. So uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's got a, it's got a cast of characters that uh, you will care about by the end of the first issue. And uh, we hope it connects with the audience as, as well as a lot of the other projects that we've been uh, blessed to do over the years and uh, the success that we've had with it. And that's as good a segue as any to, to David and Liquid Avatar and Oasis Digital Studios and some of the things that we have planned for this comic. Well, Mariano, thanks. Uh, Tom, great to see you again. Ron, first time we're meeting today and and it, it, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm a huge fan. Uh, and now we're working with some amazing creators like yourselves to um, put together some really amazing projects for uh, Liquid Avatar Technologies and our Liquid Avatar mobile app and Oasis Digital Studios with our digital collectibles. And we're, we're honored and humbled that, that you've chosen us to work with this project. And we couldn't be more excited. So, well, Tom, that, that's incredibly flattering, and I hope we don't let you down in any way, shape, or form. Well, I expect that you won't. Well, you, won't. <laughs> you definitely won't. I've seen the work. It's amazing. Tom, tell us a little bit more about the world of The Right Project. Um, a, uh, 
a scientist has developed a new technology. Um, Ron, can you repeat that? I, I can. I can probably yes. I could probably do that. Uh, okay. Right is an anagram standing for Reality Integrated Gravitic Hologram Technology. Yes. And through the and through the manipulation, through the apparently <laughs> through the power of his imagination and belief. And, and and also he's futzing around with the computer, messing and, around. And, me yeah, messing and, around. And also, like so, like so many young people in today's technology, he has insights that even Professor Click doesn't have, uh, and he has managed to to create a a living avatar that is a, a creation of his own, and uh, through through using the right uh, project. You know, it's if you're looking for you know dark, grim and gritty, uh, depressing comic books, this ain't for you. I've been around a bit in the industry, and this is a tremendous amount of fun. This, this book is just great. We were given the opportunity to put together quite honestly, quite frankly, in the truest sense of that term, we put together my dream team. I was going uh, there. <laughs> working with Tom DeFalco has always been a pleasure, and, and I it's my favorite thing in the world, but we are because I pay him. I, I give him a kickback every time he says that. Well, it helps. It helps. Well, you know. It helps. It keeps. It keeps me in spaghettios. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, but we're being joined in this project by. I mean, if Tom, if Tom is legendary, then give me a better word to describe Mr. Salbasem, who has mm -hmm. been the look of Marvel Comics for. 50 years. And uh, he's always been one of my uh, idols. And uh, to get a chance to, to meet him and to work with him and to be able to call him collaborator, but also to call him friend is just one of the great joys of my so-called career. But beyond that, you know, Tom said, who do you want to work with on this project? We have calligrapher Jack Morelli, who does Again, some of the best work in the business. He, as a hand, as a hand letterer, when he was working in the Marvel bullpen, as a computer letterer, do it, uh, designing titles, designing sound effects. He does it all. He does it all incredibly well. And uh, we have two of the best colorists working in the industry too. We have the color guides were done by a man named Bob Sharon, who has worked on Spider Man and all the major Marvel titles, and done a fantastic job. He was again my first choice. And uh, the, the actual computer colors are being done by a gentleman named Glenn Whitmore, who worked on a little thing called the death of Superman and the Superman titles uh, in the nineties in the eighties and nineties. And, and, and is working with me now on other projects and he was available and we scooped him up. Uh, so we have a dream team of creatives on this thing. In our first issue, we have two done in one stories. These days, you pick up a whole issue of a comic book and you get a piece of a story mm -hmm. most of the time. Well, well, not with our book. You will have two complete stories, beginning, middles, and end. The only, the only difference is you're going to get to the end of this book and you're going to want to see more. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, you know, this is an all-ages adventure story. I'm going to segue on something that you mentioned because it's important to bring up for, for the audience. You mentioned you get to the end of the story and you leave them wanting more. Well, David, they're going to be at the beginning of the story and they're going to get more because we are designing through Liquid Avatar and through Oasis Digital Studios, we're designing special technology that's going to be built into the covers mm -hmm. of the comic. David, take it away. Give us a little bit more of a preview on, on what's to come. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a teaser, Mariano, because there's been so much told today. And I, I love that Ron said that, that you know, uh, the young man creates a living avatar. So that, that, couldn't, that couldn't be That was after. for you, David. I appreciate it, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and so what we're going to be doing uh, is adding augmented reality to the front covers. So you'll be able to use a, 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 a liquid avatar mobile app lens that's built into the system. <laughs> you'll be able to... Um, take your phone or your tablet or device, and you'll be able to, to take a picture of the 
front cover and uh, boom, something new, wild and wonderful will show up. Some experiences, some new content, some, some teasers for future content, but it'll all be built in, into the augmented reality that you gain from scanning the front cover using your Liquid Avatar mobile app and your Liquid Avatar lens. Amazing. It, it, it is, it really is. It's things that we couldn't have even dreamt of when we first started in this, you know, crazy. Right, but it, but it ties directly into the story you're telling. Oh, it very much so. Yeah. The technology and everything else. Right. I hesitate to say too much about the nature of the characters involved because that's kind of a surprise as we go along. But uh, it it really is very hand in glove with the kind of technology you guys are talking about. So I want to thank you, gentlemen, very much for allowing us to be part of this. Well, well thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's my pleasure to introduce a good friend. And what many in the industry call a living legend, and that's Mr. Jim Steranko. Steranko is with us. He's joining Apex, he's joining Liquid Avatar, and he's joining Oasis Digital Studios with an amazing new project. And Jim, take it away. No, I think this is a very special moment. At least it is for me because, because a an opportunity uh, has arisen that I believe uh, people who have followed my work over the years are looking for, and one that uh, I can certainly get my teeth into because I've worked in the comics field doing the standard you know, page turning uh, process. I've explored that and I think we've got a a technology that's ready for us to, to make the comic book format take another step in its evolution. And I plan to use that technology. I think you're doing it with your books and I'm looking forward to doing it with mine. I think, uh, I think it'll be a great step forward in comic history. Fantastic, Jim. And we know that the audience is just dying to get a look at all of this. Well, let's show them a couple of things along the way. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to spoil the, the, the moment uh, because the book itself, I believe, is based on a relatively new concept or at least one that I haven't seen in the comic book field before. You know, that's a tall order. It's a tall order, Mariano, because you would think after the thousands or tens, thousands of issues that have been produced over the last uh, 30, 40 years, that uh, almost everything's been covered in one way or another. But that's not quite true. There are still areas that need to be developed, and the technology that we were just discussing a moment ago is going to help us do that in very unique and advanced evolutionary ways. We have new narrative processes that we can use to tell stories effectively. Maybe even we can, we can raise the hair on the heads of, uh, of readers who are expecting one thing and we give them another. You know, they turn the page and they get a forest fire. Kind of like that idea. The sky's the limit. And sky's the limit. And even beyond that, I think the universe is the limit. And I want you guys <laughs> to remember that. And uh, I'm, I'm in the development stage of the, uh, of the project now. And I think that is probably the most fun that, uh, that a creator has. Creating... Uh, is creating the, you know, the story, uh, the characters, the climax. I think, uh, I think that those things, uh, with with new technology behind them, can create greater emotional and dramatic effects than we've ever seen before. And that's where I'm going with this project. 
everyone's interest is peaked. I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say too much because it would spoil some of those surprises. It's the kind of thing you have to look at and experience. You have to embrace it at the moment. And, uh, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to uh, spoil any of those surprises at this particular point. Fair enough. Fair enough. David, Jim has been talking about technology and using technology with this project. So we're not going to give away any secrets, but tell us a little bit about some of the technology that we could expect with this project. Well, first of all, Mariano, um, you know, it's always an honor to, to be here with you, but to, add, to, to, to raise the bar one step further, it is, um, it, I, I, it's just a wow to be here with Jim. I mean, over the last six, nine months, um, you know, I, I want to say Jim and I have become close friends. I mean, we've talked, uh, you know, regularly and, and we talk about a lot of things. We spend a lot of time on the phone and it's been such a joy and a pleasure to get to know Jim. And, uh, you know, I've been a Stranko fan for, oh my gosh, well over 50 years. So, you know, the opportunity to now spend time with Jim on a, uh, on a one-to-one -one business level and, 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 and as someone to call my friend is, is really quite amazing. I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, we're all in it to, to create an experience for the fans and, and, and give them something that is, that gives them a wow moment. And I think, I think Jim is out, out to do that. And we're there to support this. I couldn't be more honored um, than, than to be working with you on this project. Yeah, I've been, I've been essentially preparing my entire life for this particular project. Wow. You may think that, that, that that's just, you know, raw, over-the-top hype, but it's absolutely true. I think everything, um, everything that I've learned, and, I've, I've, and David, you know this uh, probably more than anybody, my design sensibility into this project, mm -hmm. uh, my, my writing chops are part of it. Mm -hmm. I'll be coloring the book myself. And in terms of the, of the technological things that you just went over, this is a learning project for me. So I'm embracing uh, my friends, my coworkers to, to uh, advise me on the best way to not only reach, but to inspire my readers to go to the next page, the next panel, and, and I'm hoping that they'll work with us by allowing us not to discuss all of the surprises in the story. They're built in, they're there, and I want them to enjoy them at the moment rather than talking them away. I guarantee it'll be part of this book. Wow. Yeah. I, I, was, I was just going to add, Mariano, that, you know, and, and the fun just doesn't end, right? By adding augmented reality to this project, we can continue the experience beyond the, the you know, just the physical pages. So, you know, um, this, is, this gives everyone who has a Liquid Avatar mobile app the ability to go beyond the written page, beyond the design page, beyond, beyond something physical, you know. Uh, breaking new ground is, it can always be a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. There's an expectation, and I, I remember uh, numerous times, for example, back in my old uh, stamping ground at Marvel, uh, I remember the moment that I ended a, I think it was a nine month story. It took almost a year to tell this story. And I felt that keeping readers in that same groove for an entire nine months, almost a year, that the climax was going to have to be so appropriate that it would, that it would be uh, a groundbreaking experience. When I started, I had no idea how that was going to happen. 
when I brought the climax of the book in, and I think some of our readers may remember this, it was done in a single image that took four pages, that took two separate comic books put side by side, opened up just to see the end of the story. And I remember Stan's reaction. He freaked out because he'd never seen it before. I mean, here's one of the greatest editors that comics have ever had. And I brought this innovative thing to him and it was just so different. He didn't know how to handle it. And it wasn't until I said, Stan, don't you realize kids are going to have to buy two comic books to see the end of this story? <laughs> Great idea, Jim. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, I, I want this to happen with uh, with this project. And I'm I'm putting that I'm putting that kind of uh, energy into the book. Wow. I want uh, I want a. I want our readers to, to walk away from experiencing that story, knowing that they've just been involved in a new stage of evolution of, of narrative art. Wow. I, I, I'm so excited. I can't even, I can't wait. I just can't wait. If anyone can do this, Jim Steranko can do it. Well, I'll do my best for all uh, for you guys and, and for my readers, because I've been talking about this kind of thing for, for decades already. And wham, the opportunity is right here in front of us. I just love it. I love embracing this technology. It means so much to me. So I'm, I'm warning you guys in advance. Uh, <clears throat> this is not the standard comic book, you know, that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, that you could buy off the newsstand right now. This is new groundbreaking stuff. So strap yourself in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> well, Mariano, everyone can visit liquidavatar.com. And for some of the digital collectibles that will be coming up, they can go to oasisdigitalstudios.com. Let's not waste another second and get right into the next project. North Kiong has been performing multiple mountain missile tests. And will continue to build an ICBM capable of striking American soil. They're not going to do anything. So what brings you to the Navy, Colonel? We are looking for your best pilots with advanced aerial capabilities. They're asking me to volunteer six women who are aerial stunt performers, not combat aviators. They didn't fill you in on why you're here, I suppose. My girls and I don't do combat. See all that? Unfortunately, you don't have that choice if you're here. Welcome to Eckler. What are we doing here with the uh, Charlie's Angels, man? <laughs> you might be a pilot, but it don't mean you can fly. Awesome! I got a bitch. I got one of my six. Nope. <laughs> Still here. North Ki Young is one giant radar field. Right above you guys. Kills all over me. We're gonna need pilots with exceptional skills. That's gonna make you a fighter pilot, honey. Girls doing tricks, so uh, people clap. Right. Yeah. Big deal. I'll be damned if I let any man label me or my team as anything less than equal. Mr. President. We need to attack ASAP. My squadron is not a combat squadron. There is a long-range ICBM in the air as we speak. Break the news to them. Their next air show is over North Kiang. Lieutenant. You're going into a battle zone. You are going to be flying in the most dangerous skies in the world. The chances of survival, on a scale of one to ten, is a four. We do not accept these orders. So that's it. You're gonna pack up and leave as soon as your country needs you. And I'm not gonna watch my sisters die in the sky in North Korea. What is it? Anybody see it? It's an ambush. We are a demonstration team, sir. Get them out of there, Colonel. In three days, you will attack North Kia. Yeah. Missile! Incoming! Get us out of here, man! Get out of here! Country! Get out of there! Run. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed everything we had to show. Look forward to seeing everyone again very soon. Please stay safe, and as always, thank you for your kind support.